delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the messages of the angels in heart and mind, to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purpose of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in this our diocese, benefice and parish. And because this would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but, up on, but upon another shore, and in a greater light, that magnitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom, in the Lord Jesus, we are one for evermore. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. first lesson is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 3 verses 8 to 15 and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden 
And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman thou gavest me to be with me, she gave me the tree of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent, the serpent, beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. On my belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat, eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also, and thistles, shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thy return to the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Thanks be to God.
second lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. <coughs> the prophet foretells the coming of the Saviour. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God.
the angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God.
fourth lesson, where St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was one of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God.
lesson is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. The shepherds go to the manger. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day, in the city of David, a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will to men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Thanks be to God.
The sixth le lesson comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The wise men are led to the star by Jesus. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, and he said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Thanks be to God.
John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of everyone. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness of the light, that everyone through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lights everyone that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave the power to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
Lord, we thank you for this gift. May it be used to build your kingdom for your glory. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may your word speak into our hearts this evening. May we encounter the Christ child and be sent out into this world with your light and joy. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. There is a story I heard of a meeting in heaven between three archangels. God had given them the task of working out how to spread the good news of Jesus' birth. And they couldn't agree. There was a lot of head scratching, coffee drinking and drumming of fingers as they worked out how to go about this huge task. Gabriel said, we could go round and tell everyone one at a time, the personal, individual approach which worked marvellously with Mary and Joseph. <coughs> Raphael said, we should write it all down. That way, there will be no mistakes. An archangel after my own heart. Michael said, swords and trumpets! We need swords and trumpets! Nothing less will do. But they all knew that they hadn't really found the right answer yet. And after much deliberation, they finally had an idea that they knew would work. It was brilliant, in fact. We will write a song, they said in excitement. If we write a really good song with just the right words and a fabulous tune and harmony that makes your heart sing, then we'll only need to sing it to a few people. It'll stay in their heads and they won't be able to forget it. They'll sing it in the shower. They'll whistle it down the road. They'll teach it to their friends, their family and their children. And before you know it, the whole world will know this wonderful news. So they did. They went to a lonely hillside and sang their song to a group of shepherds under the stars. And they even let Michael have his trumpet. The shepherds were filled with joy and the song stayed with them. They sang it as they ran down the hill and into the town. They sang it as they searched for the stable. And they even sang it very quietly uh, as a lullaby when they found the baby at last. Then they went out rejoicing and sang that song to anyone who would listen, and anyone who wouldn't too. The song worked so well that the news spread throughout the world. People sang their song to their family and friends, and their children, and their children's children. The song was so good that we're still singing it, or a version of it, 2,000 years later. That's why we gather at a service like this, to sing together, to hear the story again in carols and scriptures, and to join our voices with the angels who are still singing in heaven. Singing is how this wonderful story has been passed down over the years and why we love these beautiful carols which speak into our faith. I bet we'd be able to sing the lyrics to While Shepherds Watched more easily than we could recall the story in Luke chapter 2. Saint Augustine said, Anyone who sings prays twice. We don't only learn the stories of the faith, we learn why they matter. We learn that Jesus shares our sadness as well as our gladness. He weeps 
with those who weep and rejoices with those who rejoice. We learn that we can hold those in need before God and know that our prayers are heard because Jesus is already walking alongside them. We learn that God imparts to human hearts the blessing of this heaven, that Christ enters into our hearts when we come to him and invite him into our lives, that he walks with us no matter what our circumstances, because he loves us unconditionally. He comes to us and abides with us, our Lord Emmanuel. We learn that when we think of all the complex needs of this troubled world, we can bring them before God because the world belongs to God. We learn that the hopes and fears of all the years are met in the Christ child on Christmas night and every night. And we learn that we have an offering to make ourselves we bring our voices to join with the angel's song and we bring our presence before God and with one another in this place and our love for Jesus and one another and the world and make our offering. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. But what I have I give. This Christmas, we can offer ourselves just as we are to the one who has already given us everything, to Jesus, the light of the world. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, our Redeemer, who didst prepare the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of thy Son, grant that, as she looked for this coming, as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he shall come again to be our judge, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen. Now, just before the blessing, I would just like to thank you all for attending this evening. It's your church and it's wonderful to see you and would love to welcome you back. I would also like to thank those who've helped to make our church look so fabulous tonight. Thank you to all of our readers, to our fabulous choir. Indeed, the angels were present this evening. I think our choir could actually have a, a round of applause. Shall we give them a, a round of applause? Thank you to all of you and your heavenly voices as well. I'd also like to thank our organist Andrew, up at the top there, out of sight. <laughs> to Chris, our conductor. Thank you so much. And to everyone who has worked so hard to bring this service together this evening. So, and I'd also like to remind you all, please do join us for some refreshments after the service. And finally, I'd like to wish each and every one of you a happy Christmas. And I pray that you and your loved ones may know the love and peace of the Christ child. And that his peace may be a blessing to you all this Christmas. And now the blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>